Hi, my name is David Erickson. I'm Tailwind Search Specialist. And I'm Ryan Goodmanson, Director of Search at Tailwind. And this is the Tailwind Flash Briefing. Our first story this week comes from Google, who is now introducing lead form ad extensions to both YouTube and Discovery campaigns. These new lead forms that they're adding are actually ones that they've been testing in search campaigns previously, but they're bringing it over to YouTube and Discovery campaigns now to see how brands and users will interact with it. Essentially, engagement with the lead forms don't show up in analytics because people are never arriving to the site, but you're still able to get that lead direction directly from where they're, they're witnessing your content firsthand. Engagement with these lead forms also won't be attributed to actions users subsequently take on your site, meaning that some of the ad revenue and the analytics that you're getting back from it won't be completely accurate in terms of who's responding to the ads themselves. These lead forms are going to be fairly simple at the start and only contain your name, your email, your phone number, and your postal code. And advertisers are going to have to be able to take this information as well as city and country that comes from where the ad is researched and get that contact information to reach out to you directly. They also announced that with these new lead forms, they're working on automated data imports that will be able to import the data into Google Ads. And these features are going to be able to help small businesses by providing them the opportunity to really reach out to businesses firsthand without having to have an expensive new site or put a lot into their budget that's going to go ahead and get people into a funnel traffic. So with Google continuing to find ways to engage with its users within their own properties, do you see any pitfalls with less people visiting websites like their branded websites, driving down engagement, limiting people converting or accessing events within their own analytic properties? So I, I can I can kind of see this working in part as a dual-edged sword where it, it'll do a lot of positive, but it has the potential to do harm. But for the most part, I think this is going to be extremely beneficial because if you're providing content that's, that's worth seeing and people want to see, and you're providing ad copy and ad text that people are engaging with, then they're still going to want to come to the site. It's not going to limit the, the interactions you can have. It's just providing a new opportunity for people to interact in a new way. And a lot of the times, this is going to benefit people, like we mentioned earlier, with smaller businesses that, that can't afford to really have everything built up or have everything as nice, or maybe don't have the time and resources that they can put into writing and testing ad copy or different ad formats. They now have this opportunity to just interact and connect with people directly from from whatever they're putting out immediately, and they don't have to just wait and, and hope that people go through the site and go through the funnel to get there. I'm trying to think I'm, if there's an SEO element to it, because like if people are seeing ads, you might also be pushing people into the organic if they don't want to click on the ad or cl click into the, into the conversion or into the, the form. People might be more willing to, especially for branded phrases, go into the organic listing, which is good too. So in other news, podcast ad spending is expected to surpass $1 billion by the end of next year. This year, however, podcast spending will reach about $782 million, up about 10% over last year's, uh, giving it a 21% share of the U.S. digital radio ad market. And it's interesting because podcasts have become accessible to a much wider audience and have performed extremely well, especially during the pandemic. In fact, Amazon and Audible have joined the competition and will be allowing podcasters to upload their content to their own platforms. Only a very small percentage of podcast advertising, or about 4%, is bought programmatically, however. This is expected to increase to 6% next year and to 8% by 2022. This year, 105 million people in the U.S. will listen to podcasts, surpassing 100 million for the first time. And we expect the number only to grow in the future. So when we're looking at the amount of podcasts that exist now and the amount of people that are interacting with it, what do you think there is that creators can do to make their content stand out in, in what's becoming a heavily saturated market? I think when it comes to podcasts, personality and being unique are key here. I think there's a lot of things that creators and podcasters can do to help make their podcast or any content for that matter stand out in a pretty saturated market. One, if you're on talking on behalf of a brand, incorporating themes and uh, topics that go and stretch beyond the brand itself, people don't want to listen to product and service updates all day long. Instead, they want to listen to things that are a little bit more entertaining. On top of that, if you're filming yourself recording your podcast, you can also submit that and publish it to YouTube or incorporate it into social media profiles and platforms 
or even to the content of your website, gaining visibility, not only through the platforms, but SEO and how people are searching as well. So, so on that same note, would you recommend that companies consider starting a podcast as, as a new form of branded content that can be utilized? I think that really depends on how companies understand where their users are actually spending their time. If you know your target audience is on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or are listening to other things on their mobile devices at home, then absolutely looking at a way to publish content in that new form, in that new medium, is a great way that you can increase visibility or audibility in that form, in that matter, uh, to currently existing users or even new users for that matter. If you know that people are not listening to podcasts, if you have that data and information to be able to understand that that's not the case, then maybe it's in your best interest to look at other mediums like video or SEO and content within your already existing platforms. Well, I'm David Erickson. And I'm Ryan Goodmanson. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Tailwind Flash Briefing. Be sure to keep an eye out for the next episode.